Good afternoon, brothers and sisters in Christ. Good afternoon to Our Lady of Beautiful Love parishioners and your friends and family and Derogationist seminarians and all those who are watching on Facebook live stream. We'd like to welcome you to this teaching on spiritual warfare, Mama Mary and the challenges of the times. You all know that in behalf of Father Rio, Evangelista and the Parish Pastoral Council, we welcome you. You are aware most likely that we offer recollections and teachings once a quarter in order to equip us in our formation as Catholics. And this topic that we are, that our speaker is going to cover, and we thank the good Lord because in his very busy schedule, he was able to accommodate us. And this was made possible, of course, for the Legion of Mary because he's a legionnaire of Mary himself. So I'll just run through very quickly. We will start with an opening prayer and then Father, our speaker, will be introduced and then we will have the teaching. This would be followed by a Q&A and some of you, or a few of you, have already sent your questions, which Father already has. But if any of you, because we only have like about 20 minutes for the Q&A, and then the blessing of the sacramentals. And then Father will preside over the Eucharist, the celebration of the Eucharist for the 6 o'clock p.m. Mass. So let's all rise for the opening prayer. We have prayed already, so we will now introduce, you may now sit down. The rosary was the prayer. Okay, so we will now introduce Father, our speaker. Reverend Father Jose Francisco Siquia, or Father Joseph. Born on June 15, 1967, he is a diocesan priest from the Archdiocese of Manila under His Eminence Jose Cardinal Advincula. He attained a Bachelor of Arts in Philosophy in 1987, USD Faculty of Arts and Letters. Entered the seminary in 1989 and completed his seminary training both at San Carlos Major Seminary and at the USD Central Seminary. He attained a Bachelor of Arts in Sacred Theology from the USD Ecclesiastical Faculties, a licentiate in Spiritual Theology from the Angelicum in Rome, as well as Masters in Psychology, USD Graduate School, and he is currently taking his doctorate in Moral Theology at the Pontifical University of Santo Tomas in Manila. Professor of Pastoral Psychology and Pastoral Counseling, Spiritual Theology and Discernment of Extraordinary Phenomena, including the study of Angelology, Angelology, Demonology, Discernment of Spirits, and Discernment of Visions and Apparitions at San Carlos Seminary Graduate School of Theology and Social Psychology College Department. He is a spiritual director and a director of human formation at San Carlos Mayor Seminary, the Archdiocesan Seminary of Manila. Presently, Father Joseph is the commissioner of the Archdiocesan Commission on Extraordinary Phenomena, Archdiocese of Manila, and the director and chief exorcist of the Archdiocese of Manila Office of Exorcism. An exorcist of Manila for the past 20 years and the Secretary General of the Philippine Association of Catholic Exorcists with 170 delegated exorcists, which is under the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines and affiliated with the International Association of Exorcists based in Rome. He is the author of four exorcism books published by St. Paul's Philippines, as well as the Catholic Handbook of Deliverance Prayers. He has given conferences on the ministry of exorcism to the exorcists and priests of Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore, and Brunei. He has regularly attended the Vatican course on exorcism and spiritual liberation at the Regina Apostolorum University in Rome, Italy, and has also been a regular lecturer there. He is a lecturer at the United States course on exorcism and spiritual liberation at the Pope Leo XIII Institute 
Mondelein University in Chicago, Illinois. And now we would like to thank Father Joseph for coming here to Our Lady of Beautiful Love Parish to give a talk on spiritual warfare, Mama Mary, and the challenge of our times. Let us welcome Father Joseph. Hello, hello. So thank you, Badet, for that uh, warm welcome. And I'm really honored and thankful to be here, to be able to share uh, my knowledge about not only spiritual warfare, but more especially about Our Lady. All exorcists are very much in love with her because of her, we may say, constant protection and intercession, which we regularly see in the ministry. Now, the title of uh, this talk is Mama Mary and the Challenge of Our Times. I will talk a little about spiritual warfare uh, and the role of Mama Mary in spiritual warfare. So I would like to begin by quoting uh, St. John Bosco. I'm sure all of you know him. And he is a great devotee of Mary, Help of Christians. And this is what he said. I always want to reiterate this to make us aware of the, uh, the times that we are living in. Sabi niya, he said that some of the most serious trials in the long history of the church were about to occur in the 20th century. And compared to what would still happen, all the suffering that had already occurred on the church's history would be almost insignificant. That means in the 20th and 21st century, we can expect a lot, lot more challenges. Even in the Ministry of Exorcism, we are, the numbers of exorcists around the entire world are now uh, is continually growing, and we are now already almost in the thousands, maybe. And it is as many as though we were again in the early church. And the reason is that there is now a, a rise now in diabolical activity that has not been seen since the early church's history. And St. John Bosco had this dream when the church was being attacked by any, its enemies. There were two great means that uh, the Lord showed him wherein the church would be saved from these attacks. According to him, the two means by which the church is saved is devotion to Jesus in the most blessed sacrament and the devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. And that's why this is the number one target of cults and false religions. Ang unang-unang gagawin nila in order they will draw you away first and foremost from the Eucharist. They will let you join, for example, their fellowships, you know, mukhang masaya dyan, everybody's happy. But as long as the devil is happy there, precisely because that you are there, precisely because you have left the Eucharist. And secondly, once you are in those cults, you have entered those cults, you will start to see little by little how they will attack Our Lady. And this is always a common thread in those who desire to take away and destroy the faith of Catholics. And this was a secret given by Our Lady of Lasalet to one of the shepherd children. She mentioned that the, the demons would arrive at the end of the 19th century, or at least at the commencement of the 20th century. It is not because the Lord is giving them more and more power today. It is because man is little by little leaving the faith. More and more people are leaving the faith. As faith weakens, there is a vacuum that is created, and there the devil enters. As Pope Benedict XVI tells us, there is a power more powerful than man, that when God is not present, this more powerful being and beings will immediately enter into the vacuum that is left. And these are the fallen angels. That is why when Judas, according to Pope Benedict XVI, uh, he mentions Judas, that when he left the Lord, immediately Satan entered him. A more powerful being than a human being entered into him. Another secret given to Melanie, one of the other shepherd children, 
In the year 1864, Lucifer, together with a large number of demons, will be let will be unloosed from hell. They will put an end to faith, little by little. That's why, according to our Lady of Lazarus, the demons will have great power over nature. They can cause storms and calamities. This is part of the power of the fallen angels. They have power over anything that is material. Therefore, they can cause calamities. And we know how saints, many times when there were calamities, they would simply exercise the spirits and suddenly they would be calm and tranquility. According to Our Lady, there will also be churches built to serve these spirits. And alam natin, sa ibang bansa may mga templo na, may temples of Satan. And it is now, Satanism is now considered a religion in other countries. It is tax-free and they have even chaplains. So imagine that, how unthinkable that scenario would have been decades ago. And according to Our Lady of Lazalet, the sins of men are the cause of all the troubles of this earth. Because man, as he lives further away, he lives, he lives God and he moves further away from God, St. John Paul II would say, immediately the evil spirits will fill up that vacuum. And therefore, Our Lady of Lazalet gives us this challenge. Fight, children of light, you, the few who can see, for now is the time of all times, the end of all ends. So these past three centuries have really been a constant, we may say, uh, we have seen a constant increase in the diabolical. Not only the diabolical, we see a lot of calamities, wars, etc. occurring in today's world. And Blessed Aunt Catherine Emmerich, the greatest visionary of the church and gratified by St. John Paul II, tells us, God himself has decreed this, and I was likewise told that the devil will be unchanged for a time 50 or 60 years before the year of Christ 2000. A certain number of demons are to be let loose much earlier than Lucifer. That's why St. John Paul II tells us we are now facing the final confrontation between the church and the anti-church of the gospel versus the anti-gospel. But we must not be afraid. Why? Because the greatest of the saints were born during the greatest of wars. So we should also be thankful for the opportunity to be born during this time because now we can enter into the battle, in the midst of the battle and gain a lot of glory for our Lord. We should not be afraid. This is a great opportunity to become a saint. From this book, The Marian Option, God's Solution to a Civilization in Crisis, before the coming of the Antichrist will be the coming of a, what we call an anti-Mary. And according to this author, we are now living in an anti-Mary time. If Christ is the new Adam and Mary the new Eve, it only makes sense that an Antichrist would have the female complement of an anti-Mary. Because the devil knows that before the coming of Christ, the second coming of Christ, Mama Mary will prepare the way. And therefore, the devil, is, who is an ape of God, gagawin din niya, he will also try to not only attack Christ to the Antichrist, but attack Mama Mary to an anti-Mary culture or movement. An anti-Mary can be seen as a movement. It would be an embodiment of the disobedience of Eve. For example, ngayon, kapag minasdan natin ating uh, lipunan, marami tayong makikita mga di dati natin napapansin noong unang panahon. We see a culture that is self-absorbed, narcissistic, proud. They disdain suffering and the cross. Remember, we can never separate, separate Christ from the cross. But, and we have the cross always with us. But now when a Catholic experiences some suffering, immediately they complain like something is wrong with their spirituality. That something is wrong in their life. They have separated Christ from the cross. There's also that independence of God. 
following one's own values and standards. We do not anymore follow, the world does not anymore follow the standards that God has placed in the world, especially in nature. The devil is trying to destroy all the institutions that God, the Christian faith has put up. For example, marriage, the family, the world is trying to destroy all of that. Because if you destroy the family and you destroy marriage, you destroy all vocations. You will be able to destroy all the vocations if you attack the foundation. Also, there is now an independence from all legitimate authority and arrogant and aggressive for one's rights. People are now, we may say, not that humble and obedient to what the church teaches. People come up with their own standards of what is right and what is wrong, what is good and what is bad, what is true and what is false. And therefore, nakalukot dyan is that when they meet the Lord at the end of their lives, they will discover that their standards are not enough to enter heaven. Only the standards of God will allow us to enter into heaven, not our own man-made standards. Because to be able to unite with an infinitely holy God, how pure must a person be? How purified must he be? We can never therefore lower the standards based on human, we may say, concupiscence or human weakness. We have to ask for the grace that we reach the standards that God has given us to enter heaven. There's also attack on motherhood and virginity. Motherhood is now being attacked. Also virginity is seen not anymore as a we may say a value. There is a culture of death. Instead of having children for the sake of those children and their future, children become all about parents. Therefore, <laughs> therefore we see in the entrance of contraception and then abortion. Children are not anymore gifts but burdens. Not anymore means to learn how to love, but they are seen as obstacles to enjoyment. You also see now a highly sexualized age because Saint uh, Alphonse de Liguri tells us that most souls fall to hell because of the sins of the flesh. Yan din ang sinabi ng ating mahal na ina sa Fatima that most souls fall into hell because of sins of the flesh. Saint Alphonse tells us why. Because it is not because it is the greatest sin. It is because it is a sin that most people will not give up. And now we are a very highly sexualized society. And this is very, very uh, sad. How many are caught in the web of this sin? That's why they, according to Sister Lucia, the final battle will, between the Lord and the reign of Satan will be about marriage and the family. Satan will try to destroy the very foundations of all vocations, the foundations that God himself established. That's why St. Louis de Montfort, the great Marian saint, tells us, God then wishes to reveal and make known Mary, the masterpiece of his hands in these latter times. So now it's, it's very important to be really close to Mama Mary, be, to be really close to her, because being the way by which Jesus came to us the first time, sabi St. Louis de Montfort, she will also be the way by which she will come the second time. She will prepare the way for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it seems that it is already close because we are now in the Marian age. We are now in a Marian age. That means these are the signs of the times. Before the coming of Christ, Mama Mary will prepare the way. And some of the signs that point that we are already in the Marian age are this. There is now the multiplication of Marian apparitions. We are now in the Marian century. There is a continued development of Mariology. There, among the popes, there has been a significant increase in writings about Mama Mary in the last two centuries. There is development in the popular devotions to Mary. 
And there is the continued development of many, many Marian communities. This is a sign of the times. God will have the final say, and that is Mary, according to the Song of Songs. Who is she that cometh forth as the morning rising, fair as the moon, bright as the sun, terrible, and as, our, as an army set in array? Now, the essence of Marian spirituality is imitation. But there are three important elements if you desire to have a true devotion to Mama Mary. Consecration, reparation, and imitation. To practice the Marian virtues, this is very, very important. It's useless to have all the devotions if you yourself are not being transformed by these devotions. Marian spirituality is interiorizing her dispositions and virtues, learning about who Mama Mary is and how she responded to different situations. Paano siya tumugon sa mga iba't ibang mga pagsubok sa kanyang buhay? Learning how she responded, learning what were her sentiments, learning ano ba ang pananaw niya sa mga nangyayari sa kanyang, sa kanyang paligid. It is in order to replace her old ways of doing things and perceiving things. So whenever and wherever we are, the world does not change us, but we transform the world through a Marian presence. That is why seminaries are in the seminary to be formed. Para paglabas nila sa mundo, they are the ones transforming the world. Hindi yung sila ay little by little being contaminated by the world. Kaya matagal ang formation sa loob ng seminaryo. Because as they return to the world, they should not, be, not anymore be off the world. Or else immediately they will be corrupted by the world. That is also what it is to be a Marian. And therefore, our constant thought should always be, in any situation, what would Mama Mary do? How would she act? What would be in her heart in this situation, in this difficulty? How would she perceive this? And when this becomes automatic, then Mama Mary is formed in us. And as Mama Mary is formed in us, then so is Jesus. Loving and living like Mama Mary, I would like to focus a little on this. In Luke chapter 1, verse 28, we see the greeting of the angel Gabriel. Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Hail in Greek means rejoice. Rejoice. Full of grace, the angel does not call her by her personal name. Mary is given a new name which is full of grace. So this is very, very significant. Names given in the Bible denote the essence of a person. Pinakadiwa ng isang tao. In December 8, 1854, Pius IX solemnly declared the dogma of the Immaculate Conception. Mama Mary did not become full of grace at the angel's greeting. It was part of her very being, her essence. Immaculate Conception that does not simply mean that you are freed from original sin. It means, in actuality, something more positive, much more positive. It means being you are full of grace. You are filled with the Holy Spirit. That is why four years later, in Lourdes, on the Feast of the Annunciation, Mary said, I am the, the Immaculate Conception. In Lourdes, I am the Immaculate Conception. She did not say, I was immaculately conceived. She said, I am the Immaculate Conception. That means she used the words as a noun. She did not use the words as a verb. It simply means that what the Immaculate Conception is her essence as a person and not a mere quality added to her. Mary is radically therefore holy from the very beginning. The devil had, could not touch her. Sin could not touch her. From the very beginning, she was pure and filled with the grace of God. Nothing more can be added to the perfection of a creature. Mama Mary in heaven is filled with the Holy Spirit and nothing more can be added by God to her perfection. That is how perfect Our Lady is. She is the peak of creation, 100% perfect. There is no creature more perfect before or will be after. 
Her grace is higher than all the highest seraphim and angels combined. That is why she is queen of the angels. Not only queen of men, queen of the church, she is also the queen of angels. Now the beautiful thing about this is she loves us with the fullness of love because grace is love. Therefore, the fullness of grace means the fullness of love for us. So when we say Mama Mary is full of grace, it simply means that Mama Mary can, is the only person as a creature who can love us as we ought to be loved. As we ought to be loved. That's why St. Alphonsus de Liguri tells us, no one after God loves us or can love us as much as Mary. And if we were to combine all the love that mothers bear their children, all the love of husbands for their wives, all the love of angels and saints for their devoted clients, all this would not equal Mary's love for a single soul. This is a reality that many of us take for granted. That there is someone there so in love with us, a mother so in love with us, but many, many times we don't even realize that and don't invite her into our lives by having a devotion to her. That's why St. Maximilian Kolbe tells us, just as the Son, to show us how great his love is, became a man. So to the third person, God who is love, the Holy Spirit, willed to show his mediation as regards the Father and the Son by means of a concrete sign. This sign is the heart of the Immaculate Virgin. So these are very powerful words. Okay, because that, this simply means that the second person, the Trinity, became man to make us, to give us a tangible, visible manifestation of God. Okay. But with regards to the heart of Mama Mary, St. Maximilian Kolbe is telling us the Holy Spirit chose the heart of Mama Mary to be a tangible manifestation of the Holy Spirit, who is love. So what is Marian love? When we try to leave it out, first and foremost, how do we love like Mama Mary? Marian love loves God above all, since it sees God as the infinite value worthy of the fullness of our love. And we must remember, this is how God loves us. That is infinite value, who is God, loves us with an infinite love as though we too had infinite value. It is incomprehensible for God to love us this way. What is in us that makes us that lovable. But it is of course not in us. It is found in God himself. He has chosen to love us this way. Marian love for us also loves God much because faith sees the depths of our sinfulness. And yet God always has forgiven us and continually forgives us when we repent. God will always see the potential that is within us. As a formator in the seminary for since 2004, a challenge for me is to see the potential in each seminarian and to draw it out to see the potential of good in that seminarian, even though minsan pasaway, makulit. But it is a challenge for me to be able to see we need that seminarian, the potential for being a saint, and to be able to draw it out. And that is what we are called. As God continually forgives us because He always sees the best in us and is ready to forgive as long as we are sorry we must also be able to have the same response to people around us who may, we may have some difficulty relating to. Modern love is when all other relationships revolve and are permeated by our primary relationship with God. That means my relationship with others is always permeated with the love of God. John chapter 19 verses 25 to 27 at the foot of the cross when the hour of Jesus had come Mama Mary was present 
As Mary gazes from the foot of the cross, it is here that Mama Mary faces her greatest test of faith. The only thing she can cling to is faith and that this indeed is the Son of God. Mary, Mama Mary had to walk by faith and not by sight or else she could not become for us the model of faith. So in, in spite of everything going on around her, she chose to believe. She chose to see that this dying man in front of her was truly God, the God of the universe. Marian faith means I can peacefully give up control when things become dark and so to seek only to control my clinging more completely to God who is infinitely worthy of trust. You cannot have faith when there is no darkness. You cannot develop the virtue of faith kapag lahat ay malinaw, maliwanag. Therefore, you cannot tell me, I, Father, I have faith because, you know, my life is good, everything is well. That's not faith. Faith is when you can tell me, Father, this, I have so many difficulties, sicknesses, but I still believe in God. I still believe that God loves me and is a plan for me. That is faith. Faith only grows in darkness. It never grows in the light. So do I continually ponder what is going on in my life so that I may have the necessary faith when I am confronted with contradictions of what I expect life to be? Because madalas meron tayong sariling plano sa buhay. But God sees that these plans will not make you reach the potential that you should have especially kapag pumasok ka na sa langit and therefore He will enter into the picture because He loves us. But uh, do I have the faith to see that the hand of God is working especially sa mga bahagi ng buhay ko that I am not in control of? Especially in the areas of my life that I am not in control of, God is in control in those areas. That is where faith comes in. There were two times when Jesus was most vulnerable and helpless during his birth and crucifixion. And there was only one constant present, presence in both of those occasions. When Jesus is most helpless and, vul and vulnerable during his birth, Mama Mary was there. And when the whole spirit of the world, evil men and the fallen angels are aligned against Jesus, crucifying him on the cross, God himself chooses Mama Mary to be present during those moments. And therefore, it is a challenge for us and a reminder to us that if God himself needed the presence of Mama Mary when he was vulnerable, then we need her when we are vulnerable. Then when Jesus is about to die and the beginning church will be most vulnerable to attack, there will be the diaspora, the persecution, the church will be left helpless because the shepherd has been killed. When the church will be sifted as wheat, it is then that he, Jesus places the church into the hands of Our Lady. So Pope Benedict XVI tells us, when the disciples flee, Mary will remain beneath the cross. She will never flee. At the hour of Pentecost, it will be they who gather around her, the disciples, the apostles, will find a rallying point in Mama Mary. Without Mama Mary, there would have been no rallying point because St. Peter could not have been the rallying point because he had just betrayed the Lord at Hiyang Hiyasha. That's why there had to be a rallying point and that was Our Lady. Mama Mary is therefore the, is the center of a church under siege. Jesus, during the crucifixion, had lost all, everything at this time of his life on the cross. Persons and earthly possessions. He was actually, when, when, you, when you crucify someone, you're actually crucified naked. Kaya nga, the cross is the most humiliating instrument that the Romans have devised in order, okay, to really step on a person, to really torture him, put him down. Therefore, you are actually naked on the cross. That's why Jesus himself was naked on the cross. And there is a tradition seen by the mystics of the church 
That is Our Lady who covered the torso of our Lord Jesus Christ using her veil. But you see that Jesus had lost everything. All his followers, except for the few, his possessions, and he's about to give up his own life. And at that very moment, that is when he entrusts that the greatest treasures that he has in his heart. He entrusts Mama Mary to us as he entrusts us to Mama Mary. John chapter 19 verse 26 Woman behold your son What does this mean of course she is made to be the mother and caretaker of the first fruits of the mission of Jesus which is the church symbolized by Saint John So mama so Jesus okay He's giving St. John to Mama Mary. He's giving the church to Mama Mary to watch over. And in John chapter 19, verse 27, Woman, son, behold your mother. From that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. It is when Jesus now entrusts his greatest treasure on earth to St. John or to the church, to us, to us. From that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. The church in St. John acknowledged and accepted formally Mary as her mother. So there is both, there is what we call a double entrustment. Jesus giving Mama Mary to us and us to Mama Mary. There is what we call a double entrustment. And what does this double entrustment mean? The need for consecration, first, giving ourselves to Our Lady, and the need for reparation, watching over her. First, consecration has three points. Consecration, that's why it's important to do not only communal consecration, but individual and family consecration regularly and mean the words and act on the words don't let it simply be mouth lip service madalas wala yung puso natin kasi madalas siguro ulit ulit natin sinasabi ang mga salita kaya nagiging parang rutinary that is why it's very important before you do a consecration to really read and understand the words and speak to Mama Mary from the heart while you are praying it meaning it so cons consecration to Mama Mary assists in fulfilling our potential as baptized. Our potential as, ba as baptized. As St. Louis de Montfort tells us, Mama Mary will consequently produce the greatest saints that there will be in the end of time. And what is very important here is that uh, a great devotee of Mary will always become a saint, as Blessed James Abelioni tells us. That is why with Mama Mary, we can be certain that as a mother, she will intercede for us with the fullness of her maternal power to her son, so that we will be able to reach the potential that the Lord has planned for us, the holiness that the Lord has planned for us. Secondly, consecration is a shield from the spirit of the world and the devil, because when we consecrate ourselves to Mama Mary, we place our entire lives under her mantle of protection. That's why St. Louis de Montfort tells us, while Mary is present, the evil one is absent. While Mary is present, the evil one is absent. The power of Mary over all the devils will specially shine forth in the latter times. In exorcisms, kapag, uh, when we do exorcisms, Kapag napaka, minsan napakatagal na, ilang oras na, hindi pa umaalis yung demonyo sa demonyak. Sometimes the group simply gathers in a side and pray to Our Lady for her intercession. And immediately within a few minutes, the person is liberated. And this is a story of so many exorcists 
in their experience when they encounter difficult cases. This is a reality in the ministry of exorcism that we have seen with our own eyes again and again. St. Alphonsus de Liguri tells us when the devil wishes to make himself master of a soul, he seeks to make it give up devotion to Mary. When we deal with demoniacs or people who are possessed by evil spirits, the one thing they really hate to hear is the name Mama Mary. And they have an aversion to her name. When they hear her name, they feel very, they may say, uncomfortable. Sometimes even during interviews, when you talk about Mama Mary, there are already, you will see manifestations. Demoniacs or people who are oppressed or obsessed or possessed by evil spirits react very negatively to the name of Mama Mary. That's why the number one tactic of the devil is to destroy that devotion. If you, if you enter, enter any false cult or religion, you will see one of the main or first things they do is to des destroy your devotion to Our Lady. Saint Maximilian Kolbe tells us modern times are dominated by Satan and will be more so in the future. The Immaculata alone, or Mama Mary, has from God the promise of victory over Satan. So we have to be attached to her in order to be able to defeat Satan because she will be the one, the number one instrument that God will use to de defeat the devil. Consecration number three separates us from the world for the service of God. Before someone is used for the service of God, they are sanctified by consecration. So I say, Maximilian Kolbe tells us, Mary seeks souls who will consecrate themselves entirely to her, who will become in her hands effective instruments for the defeat of Satan and the spreading of God's kingdom upon earth. The second element, of course, is entrustment, of entrustment is reparation to Mama Mary for her sorrows as a mother. Reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Jesus told Sister Lucia Fatima of the necessity of reparation to the blasphemies by which people offend the Immaculate Heart of His Mother, especially during these days. There are so many attacks now against Our Lady compared to the past centuries of the Church. In this century, in this few, this 21st and 20th century, the attacks have been magnified a hundredfold against Our Lady. What is a reparation? It is an act of love to Mama Mary to help make up for someone's failure to or refusal to love her. When we offer some good deed or an act of self denial, I will offer this cross to Mama Mary. We are saying, I love you in order to make up an offense against her that by which someone else said, I do not love you. One of the main reasons that's why the justice of God and the judgment of God is about me, you know, is really ready to fall upon us is because so many people blaspheme Our Lady whom God infinitely loves, who is the mother of God. You can see how how infinitely high our Lord sees Our Lady. By the way, He condemns those who blaspheme against Our Lady. Now, of course, we can offer mortifications, sacrifices, but, we, but according to our uh, Sister Lucia, the most effective manner of offering reparation is the five Saturdays devotion. So here we are taking care of Mama Mary. As Mama Mary takes care of us, we try to also do our part and be a child of our mother. So now we see Pentecost, the birthday of the church, Acts chapter 1, verse 14. In the Annunciation, the Holy Spirit makes Mama Mary the mother of God. In Pentecost, the Holy Spirit makes her mother of the church. Okay. That is why St. John Paul II 
When I was still in Rome, I took a course on St. John Paul's Mariology. <laughs> and this, I took some, uh, some important points from that course. According to St. John Paul II, Mama Mary is the mother of the church. She accompanies her in time. Without Mary, the church would leave its own identity. The church is in pilgrimage with Mary. And the rule of the upper room is where the church is, Mary is. Where Mary is, there the, is the church of Christ. If you want to know where the true church is, look where Mama Mary is. Look at what church she appears in. She will never appear in any... She, there are no apparitions outside of the Catholic Church. Okay? Because she is part of the identity of the church, as St. John Paul II tells us. Where the church is, Mary is. And where Mary is, there the church is. You cannot separate Mama Mary from the church. To reach sanctity, we must allow Mary to be what God desires her to be in our lives. And therefore, if Jesus has given Mama Mary to us as a treasure, as a gift, ang tanong ngayon is, how must I respond to this gift? Now, in Revelation chapter, chapters 12 to 13, we see the battle in heaven. <laughs> okay, we see the woman clothed with the sun. Okay. She's a, the queen, okay? Queen of the angels, queen of the, of the church, queen of the universe. And this royalty of Mama Mary over the angels is what the devil cannot stand. That she, a human being, is head of all the angels. Para sa mga demonyo, mas mataas sila kaysa sa mga tao. Because they are pure spirits. So why is Mama Mary, who is a pure human being, our queen. Okay, so, yan yung kanilang kayabangan. That is what caused them, one main reason that caused them to rebel. The devil, because of his anger, does not anymore appear as a serpent. Like in uh, the Garden of Eden. Because he cannot deceive Mama Mary. He cannot deceive the new Eve. Mama Mary is able to see through this serpent. And therefore, he appears as the red fiery dragon the fullness of his power knowing that his time is short the devil raises two beasts in the book of revelation to assist him in overcoming the work of god through mama mary the first beast the beast of the sea it is the image of a dragon having seven heads and ten horns what does this mean it is power political economic and military power which the devil uses in order to persecute the church the dragon hides behind human institutions so that he is not discovered. The second beast, beast of the earth, described as re resembling the lamb but speaks like the dragon. It is a false religion that is now ca coming out that promises redemption without the need for God. One of the exorcists during our meeting said, the beast of the earth proposes salvation to men through a powerful action that derives from occult powers. So we know of many young people who say that they are not religious. They are spiritual. But what does spiritual mean? Okay. You will see that they will not be going to mass, but they will go to nature and they will be worshipping nature as a goddess. You will see them wearing magnets and crystals. Okay. They, you will see them opening their certain, what we call their psychic abilities to gain power from the preternatural world of the fallen angels. We see an, a, 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 the return of paganism. That's why in the United States, the, the number one growing religion now is, witch, is witchcraft or Wiccan. It is focused on worship of the environment, of nature, and belief in many other deities or ascended masters. Why is the battle so intense between Mama Mary and the devil? Why does the devil really hate Mama Mary? Because God himself chose the most humble of his humblest creature to destroy the pride of his most powerful creature. To exalt the lowly and put down the proud. This is this the proud devil cannot tolerate. He knows that in the end times it will be Mama Mary who will step on his head. God will use the most humble instrument. 
okay? <laughs> to shame the most, and humiliate the most proud creature who is the devil or Satan. St. Louis Don Fort, sabi niya, Satan being proud suffers infinitely more from being beaten and punished by a little and hum humble handmaid of God and her humility humbles him more than the divine power. Number two, the defeat of the devil started in time with Mama Mary's consent. When she said yes, that was a time, the beginning of the defeat of Satan. Mama Mary's consent, her yes, overturned our first defeat in time, in time with the deception of Eve. Thirdly, Mama Mary is the only human being who was never under the devil in any moment of her life. Alam natin, St. John the Baptist was uh, sanctified in the womb, but of course, when he was conceived, he was conceived in sin. Mama Mary was, okay, immaculately conceived. She was at, not, among all human beings. The devil had no power over her at any moment in her life. As the first coming of Jesus, the second coming, and final defeat of the devil will be preceded by Mama Mary, and therefore he's, he he will, he will really try to attack Our Lady, okay? the plans of Our Lady. Now, there are si signs of current demonic infiltration today. These are some of the signs that I've learned throughout the years in the ministry that there is something diabolical that has infiltrated our society, our homes, our own personal lives. There is now an increase in extraordinary demonic attacks of possession, oppression, obsession. Oppression attacks on the body, of, like mass sicknesses that cannot be diagnosed. Obsession attacks on the mind, like suicidal thoughts and voices. Possession, full takeover of the body. There is a blockage to God's blessings. A person, okay, seems not to be able to experience the blessings that the Lord desires to give him or her. There seems to be a block. There's outbreak of paranormal and psychic phenomena in places. In kaya tawo natin mga haunted houses, haunted seminaries, no? haunted convents. I've exercised hundreds of convents already. No? Of course, the devil, sabi nga uh, Saint John of the Cro uh, uh, Venerable Fulton Sheen said, uh, the devil sends so many demons especially the contemplatives, because they are a great threat to him. Okay. Sufferings that are not crosses anymore, they are burdensome, make us miserable, they are not life-giving. May, may gumagatong sa mga problema natin sa buhay. Something is aggravating the condition to make, it, to make it so heavy that we cannot carry these crosses anymore. We have to expel these diabolical spirits. Pride and disobedience to the authority and teachings of the church is a sign of the diabolical. Temptations that are very strong and persistent. This is where you can use your sacramentals. Varied and unrelenting harassment and blocks to those who desire to follow the Lord. Father, nung nakumpisal na ako at gusto nang magbagong buhay, ngayon napakarami parang malas ang dumadating sa buhay ko. Not sa diabolical harassment or retaliation. Persecution of those who desire to be holy. Loss of the sense of sin and the death of conscience. The sign of the diabolical. There are people whom after we prayed over, okay, immediately nung, uh, after the pray over, nangyari ay, the person suddenly saw that yung ginagawa niya ay mali. But before that, he could not, or she could not, accept that what he or, he or she was doing was wrong. But when the evil spirit was expelled, the deception was destroyed. And then nagulat na lang siya, mali pala ang ginagawa ko. Kasalanan pala ang ginagawa ko. And cause an intense anger, sadness, and fears that can end with murder, suicide, and mental illness. Sometimes when a family moves to a new house that has been, that is infested. <laughs> okay? Sadly, within a few months, these problems come up. Series of bad luck and freak accidents. Parang uh, malas ang buhay ng isang tao. There is no such thing as malas o swerte. Everything is under divine providence. Okay? There is no such thing as bad luck or good luck. Everything is under the providence of God. There is nothing outside His providence. There is no such thing as coincidence. 
Unusual negativity in life, whether illnesses or career failures, parang sobra-sobra na, hindi na normal. That person may be under attack. Unusual and unnatural calamities and disasters. I know of some uh, places where there were calamities, but the, the person prayed prayers of liberation, spiritual liberation, and yung kanilang bahay, yung kanilang tahanan, undamaged. Primary and spiritual combat. Of course, number one is the rosary. Okay. Our Lady herself said to Padre Pio, with this weapon, you will win. One of our latest cases, uh, naambush yung isang exorcist namin, all he had was his rosary, and he just placed it on the head of the possessed. Okay? Then, the, the possessed calmed down. Okay? That is how powerful the rosary is. That's why St. Louis IV tells us, Arm yourselves with the arms of God, with the Holy Rosary, and you will crush the devil's head, and you will stand firm in the face of all his temptations. This is why even the material rosary itself is such a terrible thing for the devil, and why the saints have used it to ch enchain devils and to chase them out of the bodies of people who were possessed. Such happenings were reported in more than one authentic record. <laughs> Okay, you can, we, put the, we can put the rosary around the neck of the possessed. Okay, and immediately the devil cannot stand that. Okay? Usually the devil after some time leaves the possessed precisely because of the, we may say, the torture that they experience. When people say the rosary together, it is far more formidable to the devil than one said privately because it is an army that is attacking him. I mean, St. Louis de Montfort. Another weapon of Our Lady is, is the scapular. Our Lady has revealed, wear the scapular devoutly and perseveringly. It is my garment. To be clothed in it means you are continually thinking of me, and I, in turn, am always thinking of you and helping you to secure eternal life. It shall be a sign of salvation, a protection in danger, and a pledge of peace. The devils once cried out to Francis, Francis, the brother of St. John of the Cross. Sabi sa kanya, take off that habit, yung Carmelite, eh? scapular, which notches so many souls from us. All those clothed in it die piously and escape us. Okay? So ito mismo galing sa bibig ng demonyo. When Sister Lucia was asked, why do you think Our Lady appeared with the scapular in the last vision? She replied, she means, she meant that all Catholics should wear the scapulars, the scapular, as part of the Fatima message. The scapular and the rosary are, are inseparable. That's why Our Lady told St. Dominic, one day to the rosary and scapular, I will save the world. The miraculous medal. The medal's efficacy is found in both wearing it and praying the prayer attaching it with faith. The proper name of the medal is the Medal of Im the Immaculate Conception. But because napakami mga miraculo ang nangyari sa pagsuot-suot ng tao ang medalyang ito, the, it was renamed the Miraculous Medal. The medal specializes in the impossible, the conversion of the hardened sinner, the cure of the hopelessly sick, as well as the more ordinary needs of people. So get to know your sacramentals and what their specializations are. Each sacramental has its own promises, indulgences, has its own special, uh, we may say, spiritual power. Mama Mary told St. Catherine Labore, have a medal struck after this model. All who wear it will receive great graces. They should wear it around the neck. Graces will abound for those who wear it with confidence. This sacramental is one of only three in the history of the church to be liturgically honored. The others are, of course, the rosary and the brown scapular. So these are the main weapons of Our Lady. Of course, I want to add this. Exorcists. Now it is very... When it, the ministry was new, more than 20 years ago, very, there were very few St. Benedict's medals. But because exorcists have experienced the, 
the we may say the effectiveness of this sacramental okay, it has been used again and again okay, in order to thwart the devil's action or to expel him the saint benedict's medal ang tawag ang pangalan na madalas ginagamit dati was the devil busting medal blessed Anne Catherine emmerich i mentioned her a while ago tells us the saint benedict's medal is a preventive against poison pestilence like this pandemic eh? sorcery somebody wants to curse you and the attacks of the devil so this is its specialization okay if you're you are in a house you have a house or you have a convent make sure all rooms have sacramentals in them because if there is a, a room that without any sacramental then the fallen angels that have been thrown down from heaven in the book of revelation to this earth may see the vacuum and enter into that area so make sure all your rooms have sacramentals like a crucifix bless uh, bless crucifix and all your religious objects must be blessed by a priest di takot ang demonyo sa imahe ng sacred heart kapag hindi bless okay that's why make sure that all your images religious images and objects are blessed it is the the sacredness of the object that, that keeps the demons away. Get the people with spiritual authority over the house, especially the parents, maybe the grandparents, to be actively involved in consecrating the home to the sacred heart and immaculate heart of Mama Mary. To tell Jesus and Mama Mary that this home belongs to you and you have full authority over this home. And the devil has no authority whatsoever dito sa tahanan na ito, dito sa bahay na ito. Okay, make sure it, these are the people who have spiritual authority over the place. That means yung mga uh, uh, magulang or kung <coughs> may mas matanda pa dyan, the grandparents, whoever owns the home. Now, some sacramentals that have been very effective when we do house infestation, holy water, of course, Exercise oil, exercise soap, exercise oil usually we put in the four corners of the room. Exercise soap, usually it lasts longer than holy water, so, uh, and we use it usually as a garden, it's a garden, uh, the, the outdoors. Blessed candles, bless incense, kapag talaga nga, the infestation is really heavy, we use blessed incense. And we use also a blessed bell, okay? which creates a sacred sound that drives away evil spirits. The part, if you see the blessing of a bell, you will notice that wherever this bell is rung, may the spirits of darkness flee in fear. Okay? That means that is part of the blessing. You're calling upon God to give the, the, the sacred sound, that power to drive away all evil spirits in the vicinity. That's why... Uh, during the olden times, when they would ring the bell regularly in the, in the churches, usually uh, the saints would notice okay? evil spirits rushing away okay? when, the, when, the, when the bells are rung for mass or early morning mass or for the angelus, okay? as long as the bells have been blessed properly. Now, there are certain common areas of infestation where you can use the sacramentals, and I will show them to you now based on my 21 years in the ministry. Rooms near old infested trees, use your sacramentals, not only if the tree is within your compound, put a St. Benedict's medal there on the tree, because there could be a, do we call it an element, St. Paul would call that being an, an elemental spirit, okay, that is attached, we usually call them encantos, right? Corner rooms, usually are the most infested, bathrooms and toilets, Uninhabited rooms like storage areas and attics always leave some sacramentals there like crucifixes, sacred statues, okay. sacred images. Playrooms, especially, you know, children are very, they're quite sensitive when they're young and they can see, they tend to see spirits, they're, they more easily, uh, we call it, their psychic abilities are a bit open when, they're, when you're young. Okay? And therefore, usually, we have many cases of children who suddenly have 
supposedly imaginary friends, but were actually real spirits. And later on, uh, they, their, their behavior changed, etc. Now we have to exorcise them. Okay? And uh, usually, uh, the, the spirits would be centered in the playrooms. Right? Okay. Large mirrors, especially antique mirrors, usually the demons love to, to attach to them. Now, a simple prayer of liberation is this. Always, of course, you're not commanding the spirit to live in your name. You're commanding it to live in the name of Christ. So always add, of course, in the name of Jesus, command, I command you to depart. And you send him somewhere to the foot of the cross, or else he will, the spirits may go to your neighbor. Right? Okay, so that's not good. No? So send them to the foot of the cross, send them somewhere. Okay? We used to send them to hell, but now we send them more to the foot of the cross. So let Jesus deal with them as he wills. Right? And then, prayer to the Holy Spirit for the infilling. Lord, fill now the empty spaces left by the spirits. So you can use a crucifix or holy water, right? You can use the holy water sprinkling around your room while you use this prayer or a crucifix, okay? So you can use this prayer of command over yourself, your fa those under your spiritual authority, and anything that you own. Okay, so this, you can use the command prayer over thing, over yourself and the people under your spiritual authority and everything that you own. But don't ever go to your neighbor and do, you know, do a deliverance thinking that, you know, you have that power to, okay, because that is not under spiritual authority, okay? You will have, you will be retaliated upon, okay? Remove all dissensions and strife from the home. This attracts demons. One of the number one causes of infestation in a home, wherein later on maraming paranormal and uh, phenomena okay? and psychic phenomena is that there is a lot of tension, emotional tension and conflict. Once that is resolved, usually the demons are easily expelled. Okay? There's a lot of unforgiveness. That's why during the pandemic, because there had been, we know that it caused isolation and there was so, what we may say, there was a lot of tension, so much tension. Okay? Among family members living together in a small space, we had so many, we had more cases because of those negative emotions. This attracted the spirits. And when there is interpersonal conflict, use spiritual resources, destroy any diabolical influence aggravating the situation and even the emotions of those concerned by using prayers and sacramentals. Use also after there has been a conflict. So for example, you had a fight with someone, a conflict, then sorry na kayo, this could have attract evil spirits. So it's good to always use holy water afterwards and command the spirits of anger, whatever, to leave. Okay? Because the anger and hatred and very ha, uh, let me say very negative emotional conflicts tend to attract evil spirits this has been proven again and again so guard your emotional life check your emotions if the devil is already starting to manipulate it and check your thought life okay? many times the devil will put thoughts in your mind the devil cannot know what you're thinking but they can put thoughts in your mind okay the devil can only see what you're imagining, pero hindi niya alam yung iniisip mo. Because that is a purely spiritual faculty. Only God knows what we're thinking. But the devil can see what you're imagining. So maybe if I'm giving this talk and I'm thinking of uh, Chicken Joy, for example, the devil can see that, ah, this priest is not uh, focused. No? So I will put more of those images there. Right? I know now his weakness. Right? Because the imagination is a lower faculty, therefore the devil is able to see that. But what I'm thinking, the devil cannot know. But he can put thoughts there. We have many cases of, of pe young people, uh, not also not, not so young, who come to us when they entered into some occult practice, like playing the Ouija board, or tarot cards, or trying to communicate with the spirits using a, uh, maybe seances. Suddenly they started to hear already voices, okay? and uh, this is diabolical obsession. When you pray, light a blessed candle to drive away distracting spirits and creating a sacred space. As the exercise bell creates a sacred sound, the candle creates a sacred smell like incense. You, you will see that you will be able to pray a lot better. 
make sure it's a blessed candle. Also, you want to hear, uh, listen to music, Gregorian music played regularly in the home creates a sacred sound. <coughs> there are prayers plus the Latin, very, very efficacious against evil spirits. This, the demons hate Latin because it, it is the official language of the church. That's why when I usually, all, I always use Latin now when I, I, when I do an exorcism because I don't want to use Latin. Okay? Sometimes when you do use English or Tagalog, then they react sila. But when you use Latin, you see the reaction really is very, very negative. Okay? Because I'm sure maybe he has been expelled by exorcists who have used that same language in the past. And it's, it has always been used not to glorify God okay? for centuries. Know your catechism, especially today. Now more than ever, because even in the latter days, many will, even the good, Maybe even the good will be led astray. So get, learn to know what is true and what is false. Know the stand of the church and be faithful and obedient. Okay? Because there will be many false prophets who will come in teaching for heretical doctrines. And sometimes the sad thing is they may come from even church leaders. If you don't know your catechism, you may be misled. So get to know the teachings of the church. Be critical always. Precisely because the number one tactic of the devil is una -una is deception. Okay? It may sound nice to the ears, but actually it is not the truth. Okay? Like for example, there is now a saying that you know, there are no souls in hell. And that's nonsense because even Our Lady of Fatima okay, showed the three children that there are souls in hell. And even uh, St. Faustina was shown hell and there were souls there. Okay? So it's like you're saying, okay, you can, no one is in hell, so you can live, you know, you can live as you want to live. Okay? God is so merciful that even though if you don't ask forgiveness or change your life, you will end, end up in heaven. Okay? That is, so you see the big deception there. Make sure everyone has a blessed object on him, so not only nandun lang sa altar ninyo, but you are wearing it, a scapular, St. Saint, Saint Benedict's medal, etc. These medals manifest who we belong to and whose authority we are under. The demons see this and tremble. So don't forget to use also regularly prayers of protection and liberation. Sometimes you only pray for healing or for blessings. And we forget that the number one enemy that we have to fight is the devil. Okay? The greatest threat to man we see. Okay, where can we see the greatest threat to man? We look at who is the greatest enemy of God, and you will know who is the greatest threat to man. So we should have, we should also do, use prayers against evil spirits for protection and also to expel them. Now some sacramentals of the church, of course, holy water, the exercise bell, okay, uh, the crucifix. When we deal with a demoniac, usually we attack all the five senses. Kapag nagbawala na yung tao, we attack the sense of sight by the, cru the crucifix. The, the, the sense of hearing by uh, the bell, the sense of taste by salt, the sense of, the sense of touch okay, by oil, the sense of smell by incense. So you see, the devil is tortured. So later on, he has to leave because he niya kaya. Okay, all the senses are being attacked at the same time. This is how we do an exorcism. The second most powerful saint in heaven is Saint Joseph, the terror of demons. He protected the Holy Family and will also protect our families if we, if we invite him into our own homes. Have a devotion to St. Joseph. And if there is within your family a member who is, who is in bondage to lust, the St. Saint Joseph's cord is a very, very powerful, okay, sacramental that you can use. And it has been used by exorcists again and again. And we've seen the efficacy of the St. Joseph's cord. If you're being attacked by incubus at night or succubus, that means spirits that will that try to binabangungot kayo, that cause you to be paralyzed, terrorizing you, making you not a, making you, uh, let me say, hey, uh, not able to breathe, okay? Where the Saint, Saint Joseph's cord. <laughs> I won't discuss so much about it. Kindly research it uh, on your free time because we have no more time. Of course, devotion to the saints, especially the saints that you are named after, okay, because they immediately intercede for us. God desires that the communion of saints be real in our lives. We are not supposed to fight alone. The church militant is assisted by the church triumphant and the church suffering. We are still all together in the battle. 
Okay? So we have to make sure that we make we pray to the poor souls in purgatory to pray for us as we pray for them, and we pray to the saints, okay, to always intercede for us. Because the church is we are still the church militant is still in the battle, and therefore the entire church is still connected in the battle. Of course, devotion to the angels, the archangels and the guardian angels, very important. Because the angels were the first ones who defeated the fallen angels, and therefore they are the ones who can teach us how to defeat them again. Pray the prayer to St. Michael, which we did a while ago, and pray to St. Raphael if you are sick, and to one's guardian angel regularly for protection. Very, very important, especially to the young. Have a devotion to the angels. Habang bata pa yung isang uh, bata, no? importante na uh, ibahagi na sa kanya, ituro na sa kanya no? ang devotion para sa mga anghel. Because little bit, if, the per, if the child has a deep devotion to the angels, usually the spirits will not approach him. Usually, uh, we have cases wherein uh, the person gets possessed, but actually the spirit attached to him when he was still a young child, when he, could, when he was still a bit psychic and he could see spirits. And they would appear as little children and he would befriend them and they would be his imaginary friend. And it, later on, it, it would cause difficulties in his life. We should also have a return to asceticism. That means we have to train our bodies, sabi ni St. Paul. I drive my body to train it. That means we can offer mortification and penance to the Lord for reparation for past sins, reparation to Jesus, the sacrilegious, uh, sacrilegious done to Him, the blasphemies against the Immaculate Heart of Mama Mary. We can also make it an apostolate of suffering when prayer joined to suffering is offered for someone, it's very, very effective. We call St. John Paul II calls it the apostolate of suffering. We can offer our mortifications and penances for the benefit of the church to imitate Christ, with his self-immolation, become more and more like the Lord, and to dominate the passions. A lady of Fatima said, sacrifice yourself for sinners and say many times, especially when you make some sacrifice. Oh Jesus, it is for love of you, for the conversion of sinners, and in reparation for sins committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. There is no such thing as meaningless suffering for a Catholic. So the Marian family, <laughs> remember again the spiritual authority of parents gained from holy matrimony. Therefore, parents have faith in your power and authority. It is Jesus in you. The right of parents over their children is not a right of lordship, but the right to safeguard them, especially from the evil one and develop the seeds of holiness in them. The parents use the sacramentals over the children and the house, holy water and blessed oil. For the house, you may add exercise salt for the gardens. Always add a prayer for faith and one's intention. So, uh, for example, a father can pray prayers of command over his child, his son or daughter over his wife, over his office, over his home. Okay? He can use that uh, direct command prayer against the evil spirits uh, over these areas and these persons. They are under his spiritual authority. Going to, as a family to the sacraments, mass and confession, praying together, parents praying for their children and children for their parents. There is a power in the child's, in a child's prayer. There is power in the innocence of a child. Unity in the family is not simply the absence of conflict, di nagpapansinan, but the proper ordering of priority towards a single purpose, having one mind and one heart. The family then becomes like an army difficult to defeat because of its unified front. Doing charitable works of mercy as a family, both the spiritual and the corporal. We are created, we are careful that our family does not become narcissistic and closes in on itself in selfishness. Some families, yes, they're so united, but they don't care about ad other families outside of them. Basta pakailam nilang nila yung kanilang sariling pamilya. And that is a narcissistic family. That's why to break that kind of thinking and mindset, and attitude and behavior to be real Marian families they have to go out and do charitable works of mercy 
whether corporal or spiritual. Remember, Jesus himself tells us, I do not know you because when I was in prison, when I was sick, etc., etc., you know the saying. That's why I like the Legion of Mary precisely because they, they really practice going to these places, practicing the corporal and also spiritual works of mercy. It is something that's very, very tangible. It is something that is very real, that connects them with, connects us with real people and alleviates their sufferings, both moral, spiritual, and physical. Learning to offer God's communal sacrifices and penances as a family so that the family as a whole receives God's blessings and graces. And the family members are formed together. Like the entire family can talk about offering a certain day for abstinence for the poor souls in purgatory. Also have family devotions that the family finds meaning as a family. Oh, for example, devotion to the divine mercy. Devotions most needed in our present day circumstances, the family can discern and start to, live, to practice that devotion. Okay? So make them family traditions that will go down the generations. Napakalukot that many generations, uh, there are many traditions, Catholic traditions that have stopped in our generation or the previous generation, hindi na bumaba sa mga kabataan ngayon at sa mga bata ngayon. Offering holy masses not only for healing and blessing, but also again for protection and deliverance and liberation of the whole family from the evil one. Faith parents must speak to their children about God's reality in their lives so that the faith becomes real to the children and not simply a family tradition. Don't simply say, go to mass or go to confession. You have to be able to make the child realize that you have that relationship with the Lord, that you have a real relationship with the Lord, and they have to hear those experiences that you have, so that God also becomes real to them. Don't just command them to go to Mass, confession, right? So in family gatherings, do you speak about Jesus, and Jesus as a real person, or do you speak about other things? So this is to check if God is real in your life. Do you speak about Mama Mary? Like in the seminary, uh, the challenge there is sometimes uh, because we, we, this, we do a lot of theology, sometimes pagkainan na, no one anymore speaks about Jesus Christ or about Mama Mary. It's about sports, it's about food. So when out as a family, do you witness to your faith in public? Do you make the sign of the cross before you eat? Or do you try to hide it and make it very, very small right? so that no one can see? Right? And you're praying the rosary, do you show it to, that, to others that you're praying the rosary or do you hide it in your pocket? I've heard of stories how people were inspired when they saw a person praying the rosary in public. So, or, or are we afraid? Are we ashamed of being Catholics? If there are special needs in the family, don't pray alone. Call another person so that Jesus is really present where two or three are gathered. And then pray for that need. Okay. Don't pray alone. Have always someone with you physically. Then of course, very important, especially today, development of your conscience, correct conscience, and the formation of virtue, especially in the young. Be part also of a Catholic community to create a Christian culture in, in and around the family, where the spirit of the world subtly and slowly will influence the family's culture and make it pagan. So kapag yung isang pamilya parang wala siyang, uh, we may say, uh, the family is not part of any kind of Catholic community, little by little, the family can start to become pagan without them realizing it. Their values will start to change. But if they are, they are part of a organization that checks and does check and balance right, with them, then they will be always, maybe we may say, always consciously keep the standards of Christ, keep the standards of the church always in the forefront of their decisions and in their actions. As we see materialism, secularism, atheism, and paganism grow around us, we have to create small havens of grace in our families. We have to establish religious fellowships 
the communities with other families, like monastic communities in the Dark Ages, or Christian households during the pagan Roman Empire, where what is true, good, and beautiful continues to be lived out. Because right now, many of the young people don't anymore know what is really what is the truth, what is really good, and what is really beautiful. In the, in the social media, just check what they are, and the apps that they have, just check what they are accessing, and you will know immediately that they are not seeking what is true, what is good and beautiful. They are seeking out what is outrageous, what is entertaining, what is pleasurable, right? what is immoral, what, what draws the old man in them. Some daily ways to live out the Marian option, according to this book, these are just some suggestions, depends upon the inspiration of the Lord. Establish a married community, fill the hall with beautiful Marian artwork. Our lady is happy with this, especially if we put like we offer flowers uh, during her feast days. Okay. The saints would always see how Mama, how Mama Mary would be so happy when during her feast days uh, she would see her children offering flowers no? or possessing her image along the streets. Okay. Visit a Marian shrine, especially if you have a certain, we may say, a need. Novena to Our Lady, undoer of knots, especially if you have addictions. The Angelus, of course. The Fatima prayer, taught by the angel of Portugal. Praying for poor souls in purgatory. Statue of Mary outside the whole house. Celebrate, celebrating Marian feast with devotion. Learn Marian hymns to sing them during her feast days. So these are things that make Our Lady happy. Yeah. Okay, very important. In order to make sure that her home is not in, doesn't get infested, aside from keeping peace within the home, forgiveness, understanding, love, you have to remove from your home all these objects, okay? Because father, sometimes I hear father, I don't know why our, there's, there's a lot of paranormal occurrences in our home. We have a beautiful altar here. When I go there to the altar, there is of course the sacred heart statue, the Immaculate Heart statue, and beside it there is Buddha. Okay? I said that is the infestation, okay? That is the infestation. That's why all occult paraphernalia, amulets, talismans, anting-anting, agimat, pangontra, Alls and medals from the albularios, orations, lucky charms, crystals, Buddha, other images of pagan gods, feng shui materials, pyramids, magnets, etc. These are all occult. The spiritual power does not come from the kingdom of God. They are from religion, religions, okay, pagan religions. Okay? Therefore, if a Catholic practices them, according to uh, Pope Benedict XVI, we call it syncretism. Papasok dyan yung occult spirits. Evil spirits will come in and occultism will come into the, will contaminate the faith. And then you have a haunted house. Any object that has to do with connecting one with the cosmic powers and energies in the universe, that's nonsense. Okay? There's no such thing as a cosmic energy or cosmic power in the universe. There's all... Remember that God did not, we have to remember that in theology, God did not create any kind of cosmic energy or power. Even scientifically, it is, it is something that is, uh, science even said that it is not true. There is no such thing as a cosmic power or energy. That's why you have to use magnets or crystals, all these kinds of things. That's why I would like to quote from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Since against the first commandment, superstition, mga pamahiin natin, one attributes an importance in some way magical to certain practices and idolatry or polytheism, the number one sin of the Israelites. That's why they were always subjugated and conquered by their enemies. So remove all of this from your homes. If you're a Catholic, <laughs> ah, eh? remove them all. They are all not from Jesus Christ. They're all not from God. Praise their roots. They're all from pagan religions. If you need them in your life, you're still a pagan. And you're practicing idolatry. Because you're telling God is not enough. That means God is not enough to provide I, I, for my financial needs. I have to, you know, 
have this cat doing this. No? Come in good luck, come in good luck. No? That means, okay, for you, God is not all powerful. Stop seeking spiritual benefits, therefore, outside of God, outside of our faith. This is the number one reason, occultism, why people enter the diabolical world. One of the number one reasons, almost nine out of ten of our cases get possessed, oppressed, and obsessed because of these occult practices. So stop seeking spiritual benefits outside of God, whether it is for healing, guidance, or financial security. Stop all practices of superstition to gain good luck or ba avoid bad luck, going to fortune tellers, going to mangkatawas, which are all against the first commandment. There is no such thing as good luck or bad luck, as I mentioned. Some words from Father Gabriel Amorth on Mama Mary. I believe that consecration to Mary is fundamental. Okay, so this is the chief exorcist of Rome, who has passed away sadly. I still met him and was uh, part of his training. I, I used to also go there to train with him while he, while he was still alive. Uh, sadly, uh, he was already 90 plus when he passed away. According to him, we consecrate ourselves to Mary so that we can consecrate ourselves more faithfully to Jesus. Through Mary, we go to Jesus as Jesus came to us through Mary. Before I could read, the holy pictures were of great influence for me. I would kiss them, especially the holy pictures of Mother Mary. We tried our best to give importance to Marian feasts. I know how efficacious are the pilgrimages to Marian shrines. When you have a need, a problem, you need discernment or help or aid, go on a pilgrimage. Like Mary, according to, to Father Amorth, we have to pray and be vigilant. The devil is always busy trying to make us commit sin. Let us offer little acts of penance, self-denial, and mortifications as our little contributions to the sufferings of Christ for the salvation of others. And he said this, no? I founded the International Association of Exorcists. You know who inspired me to do it? Mary the Madonna did. In fact, the association is consecrated to her. The devil recognized the power, according to him, of the rosary when he said, If men knew the power of the rosary, I could do nothing against them. In another occasion, the devil said, Every Hail Mary makes hell tremble. You know, I like this, this uh, old icon no, of Our Lady, I think, uh, many centuries back. No? The, the title there is, Hail Mary, full of grace, punch the devil in the face. <laughs> You can see Our Lady punching the devil there. That's the title. <laughs> I was really surprised. No? This, this is an early church uh, icon. <laughs> Satan's followers have a deep aversion to God and to Mary. According to him, the mission of Jesus is also the mission of Mary to save mankind from the evil one. Mama Mary loves us with the same heart with which she loves Jesus. She loves each one of us personally. Okay, I will end with the third secret of Fatima. The angel with the flaming sword points, pointing to the earth with his right hand crying, penance, penance, penance. St. John Paul II tells us that the message of Fatima is more important today than in the past century. Okay? That means there is still something that is still lacking. The consecration has been made, but the repression, kulang na kulang yung those people doing reparation. Okay? And therefore, the, the, the sword that is pointed with flames at its end, and the angel cry, crying penance, 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 is a symbol of God's punishment and could indicate a tremendous war. Pope Benedict XVI tells us this represents the threat of judgment which looms over the world. Penance, penance, penance means, okay, it comes from the Greek word metanoia, which means conversion or change of heart. So many times when people would ask healing from Our Lady of Fatima, she would simply say, if you change your life, amend your life, within a year you will be healed. Okay? So that is usually what people forget. They think it is magical. We seek for healing, immediately uh, the person, we pray for healing, immediately the person gets healed. That can happen, 
But many times, because mama may look, desires really the, the soul first and foremost, there is a need first to amend one's, amend one's life, no? make changes in one's life. That's why in an exorcism, we don't just pray over anyone. We make sure that the person is ready to go back to God. Because if we expel the spirit, the person is not ready to return to the Lord. Seven more powerful spirits, okay? More powerful spirits will come back because there has there's been an abuse of grace. One of St. Jacinta's last words to Sister Lucia, tell everybody that God grants us graces through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, that people are to ask her for them, and that the heart of Jesus wants the Immaculate Heart of Mary to be venerated at his side. Tell them also to pray to the Immaculate Heart of Mary for peace since God has entrusted it to her. So if we desire peace, we want to avoid war. Very important. The Immaculate Heart of Mama Mary is our answer. How much should we love Our Lady? St. Maximilian Kolbe tells us, never be afraid of loving the Blessed Virgin too much. You can never love her more than Jesus did. St. Faustina, nothing is too much when it comes to honoring the Immaculate Virgin. St. Teresa of Lisieux, my favorite saint, the saint of my vocation. Have no fear of loving the Blessed Virgin too much. You will never love her enough. And Jesus will be pleased since the Blessed Virgin is his mother. St. Louis the fourth, the salvation of the world began through Mary, and through her it must be accomplished. So let's place ourselves under the mantle of Our Lady, so that we too may be saved with her. If we stand apart from her, we will not be able to experience that salvation that will come through her. Therefore, in Revelation chapter 12 verse 1 and a great sign appeared in heaven a woman clothed with the sun with the moon under her feet and her head a crown of 12 stars so this is who is fighting for us this is who loves us and we simply have to invite her into our lives amen okay so i will uh, there are a few questions that were sent to me so i will answer them as uh, quickly as I can. Okay. Uh, so although this is a talk on Mama Mary, uh, many of the questions are... Oh, I'm dumb. Dapat, uh, maybe next time I talk just on demonology. <laughs> okay, how does... Are generational spirits real and is there a way to protect one's family from the effects of this? Yes, generational spirits are real. That means uh, there are spirits that can go down the generations. That can cause what we call curses. Okay? That's why a family can be cursed. It's not because, uh, it's not because there is some uh, abstract power causing them this misery. It's because okay, there's a spirit na bumababa. Okay? For example, isang pamilya na yung kanilang tatay ay uh, maybe mangkukulam, yung spirit ay bumababa sa uh, usually the, the second, uh, the, the next generation, the second generation, it goes to the person who is closest to the father. Or kung saan niya pinapasa yung, yung, uh, yung power na yan. Okay? Also, spirits, if a person has been unfaithful for so long, uh, maraming spirits of infidelity uh, pwedeng kumapit sa kanya it can go down also the next the family the next uh, the next in line therefore you will see some families they have all the same problems infidelity or spirits of pornography or spirits of lust or spirits of gambling whatever okay what can you say about uh, apparition of mary and the tricks of grace nipa people still have devotion to her even if apparition is a hoax well the important thing to remember is there is this now the church has already made a final a declaration you can ask archbishop garcera and uh, that our lady of Medjatrix, our lady of Medjatrix of all grace or graces according to the church this is with the signature of pius the 12th and it has been shown to archbishop garcera in the vatican Okay, that are laid up with J3 of all grace and great 
has never appeared in Lipa. And that's the final stand of the church. Uh, and it was shown to Bishop Gar Archbishop Garcera and he told him the case is definitive. That means closed because uh, he was shown the, the, the you may say, the, all the files and also the signature of Pope Pius XII. Why is mental illness, physical illness, career hardships, or any other general misfortune a sign of spiritual attack? Did not God grant us grace to Jesus? Well, they can be normal, but they can be normal, we may say, crosses in our lives that part of the human condition, but they can also be a sign that you're under attack. So for example, if a person uh, is living in a house that is infested, and whoever stays with that person, whenever you stay there, you're always getting bangungot or attack. Okay, the Lord doesn't want you to carry that cross. The Lord wants you to get rid of the spirits that are harassing you. Okay? So what is important is discernment. Okay? So there are crosses that we have to carry, but there are crosses that we are not supposed to carry. That means we're under attack. And we have to expel the spirits attacking us. But you have to discern which is the cross the Lord wants you to carry and the cross which is actually being aggravated by the devil. And therefore, is uh, now you have to use prayers of liberation or spiritual warfare prayers. How do people who are in Catholic become free from demonic attacks? Well, basically, many of them come to us, but usually they have their own pagan, uh, I cannot go really deep into this, they have their own pagan rituals, but there is no expulsion outside of Christ. That's why usually when you go, when, if, I'm a, if I'm an albulario, and I see someone comes to me na medyo may sakit, being attacked by an evil spirit, and I see the spirit is medyo quite strong, I will tell the person, go to a more powerful albulario. Because what an albulario does, or a fake witch doctor, is simply to subjugate the spirit that is in the person with a more powerful spirit. There is no expulsion outside of Jesus Christ. Okay? And so it's very important. Without the name of Jesus, you cannot expel any spirits. There is no expulsion, only subjugation. Subjugating one lesser spirit to a more powerful spirit. Okay? So usually, uh, although many these people have all these appeasement rights, they nagpapadugo sila, nag-aalay sila, in order to appease the spirits, because these fallen angels desire worship first and foremost. Okay, hindi ka namin gugulin, basta you offer us blood, you offer us this, you offer us this, submit to us, worship us, we will not touch you, okay? Can one wear gemstones or crystals for jewelry or clothing without believing in their meaning or symbolism? Yes, as long as it has not been bought in a feng shui shop or any shop, that is a cult. Okay. Uh, should a person who is sensitive to the presence of spirits, third eye, develop this gift? No, he should not. Because <coughs> there are what we call charismatic gifts, and they are not, they, this is very different from psychic abilities, okay? The third eye. Okay, the third eye or the psychic abilities have been developed by in paganism in order for the person to get in touch with the preternatural world of the fallen angels and to gain power from them and therefore it is not a charism from god okay and therefore don't call it a gift your third eye or you're being sensitive to the, to the world of the spirits is not a gift that the lord wants you to have okay if ever there is what we, we what we call charism and a charism is given by god uh, when it is needed by the person so for example i go to a place and i can see spirits left and right Third eye ko. But if I, for example, I'm in ministry and I pray to the Lord to grant me the charism of discernment and I go to a house, that's the only time I will see spirits. Then I can command them to go. Okay, that's a charism. It's given only when it's needed. But if it's 24 7 open, uh, that's not a charism. Okay? Remember, the more uh, psychic you are, the more you're open to possession, obsession, and oppression because the devil has more access to your internal faculties. He can easily put you into a trance state. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and now I will bless all the sacramentals. I will see if I can uh, bless them all.
just remain in your place. Father will bless will bless it while you're in, in your own seat. Okay, so just remain, just remain uh, in your place. You don't have to come here. Okay, the blessing is spiritual. Okay, so I don't have to go there to you. Okay. Just have the intention that you want it blessed and it will be blessed. I will first bless the, the salt. <clears throat> God's future salt, I cast out a demon from you by the living God, by the true God, by the holy God, by God who ordered you to be thrown to the water spring by Elishas to heal it of its barrenness. May you be a purified salt, a means of health for those who believe, a medicine for those for body and soul and for all who make use of you. May all evil fancies of foul fiend, this malice and cunning, driven, driven afar from the place where you are sprinkled. Let every unclean spirit be repulsed by him who is coming to judge both the living and the dead and the world by fire. Almighty everlasting God, we humbly appeal to your mercy and goodness to grace you bless this creature's soul which you have given for mankind's use. May all who use it find in it a remedy for body and mind. And may everything that it touches or sprinkles be freed from uncleanness and any influence of the evil spirit through Christ our Lord. God's creature water, I cast out the demon from you. In the name of God, the Father Almighty. In the name of Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, and in the power of the Holy Spirit. May you be a purified water, empowered to drive far, afar, all the power of the enemy, in fact, to root out and banish the enemy himself, along with his fallen angels. We ask this in the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is coming to judge both the living, the dead, and the world by fire. O God, who for man's welfare establish the most wonderful mysteries in the substance of water, hearken to our prayer and pour forth your blessing on this element of being prepared with various purifying rites. May this creature of yours, when using your mysteries and endowed with your grace, serve to cast out demons and to banish disease. May everything that this water sprinkles in the homes and gatherings of the faithful be delivered from all that is unclean and hurtful. Let no breath of contagion hover there, no taint of corruption. Let all the walls of the lurking enemy come to nothing. May the sprinkling of this water be... May, may every, by, by the sprinkling of this water, may everything oppose the safety and peace of the occupants of these homes be banished, so that in calling on your holy name, they may know the well-being they desire and be protected from every peril to Christ our Lord. Amen. We now bless the oil. God's future oil, I cast out the demon from you, by God the Father Almighty, <coughs> who made heaven and earth and sea and all that they contain, that the adversary's power, the devil's legions, and all Satan's attacks and machinations, be dispelled and driven afar from this creature oil, that it bring health in mind and body, to all who use it in the name of God, the Father Almighty, and of our Lord Jesus Christ, His Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Advocate, as well as in the love and self of the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is coming to judge both the living, the dead, and the world by fire. Let us pray, Lord God Almighty, for whom the hosts of angels stand in awe, and whose heavenly service we acknowledge. May it please you to regard favorably and to bless and hallow this creature oil, which by your power has been pressed from the juice of olives, you have ordained it for anointing the sick, so that when they are made well, they may give thanks to you, the living and true God. Grant, we pray, that those who will use this oil which you are blessing in your name may be delivered from all suffering, all infirmity, and all wiles of the lurking enemy. Let it be a means of averting any kind of adversity from man made in your image and redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, so that we may never again suffer the sting of the ancient serpent through Christ our Lord. We now bless the medals. St. Benedict's medals. <clears throat> I purge you medals of evil by God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and of the sea and of all that they contain. Every power of the adversary, every court of the devil, every attack and appearance of Satan, get thee out of these medals and fly apart. And may they become for all who will use them a help for body and soul. In the name of the Father Almighty, in the name of Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, in the name of the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, and in the love of the self same Lord Jesus Christ, who shall come to judge both the living, the dead, and the world by fire. Almighty God, in lavish dispenser of every good, we the suppliants pray that by the intercession of Saint Benedict, thou wouldst pour out thy blessing on the sacred medals, inscribed in letters and symbols appointed by thee, that all who will wear them with minds intent on good works deserve the obtain health of body and spirit, the grace of making progress in holiness, 
as well as the indulgences which have been granted. And may they escape by a merciful help every onslaught and fraud of the devil, and finally stand before the sinners and holy to Christ our Lord. You may now bless the candles. O candles, I exercise you in the name of God the Father Almighty, in the name of Jesus Christ, His Son, our Lord, in the name of the Holy Spirit. May God uproot and cast up from these objects all power of the devil, all attacks of the unclean spirit, and all deceptions of Satan, that they may bring health of mind and body to all who use them. We ask this to the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is coming to judge both the living and the dead and the world by fire. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, light of everlasting life, you have given us candles to dispel the darkness. We humbly implore you now to bless these candles at our lowly request, and hallow them by the light of your grace, by the power of the Holy Cross, endowed them with the heavenly blessing. May the blessing they receive be so powerful that wherever they are placed or lighted, the princes of darkness shall flee in fear along with all their legions, and never more dare to disturb those who serve you, the Almighty God. May the entire building in which these candles are kept be free from the power of the adversary, and be defended from the snares of the enemy. Grant, we pray, that those who will use these candles may be protected from every assault of the evil spirit and be safeguarded from all danger to Christ our Lord. So we now bless all the other sacramentals. Heavenly Father, I ask you now in a very special way through the session of Mama Mary St. Joseph and to the other saints and angels depicted here that all these other objects may be instruments of growth and holiness of life, the life of prayer and virtue. May they drive away all unclean spirits and all diabolical forces, all fallen angels, their presence, their temptations, their harassments, their retaliations. May they all be expelled. And through these sacramentals, their Father asks entirely in the name of Jesus Christ, they, all, they also banish illnesses and diseases and bring about the healing of relationships, body, soul, and spirit. May, be the, may they be a protection from all that is harmful, especially that which is spiritual, and also against this pandemic. And we ask you, Father, may these sacramentals be a source of all your blessings, graces, and charisms, so that each and every one of those who own them and use them may always experience the tangible, a tangible presence of your love, your protection, your guidance, and all that they need to be able to enter your kingdom. And all of this, Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus, the intercession of the angels and saints, as I bless them all now, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so I don't have to go around anymore because it's blessing is spiritual. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you, Father, thank you so much. May the Lord continue to empower you, clothe you with the Lord's right, with the right, righteousness and the love of Mother Mary. It's very timely that during this Marian months of September and October, and us being a parish of Our Lady of Beautiful Love, that this desire to grow in that beautiful love of our dearest mother will grow in, in you and in all of us. Thank you so much. Let's give the Lord a round of applause for the gift of Father Josie Sikia.